morning. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, we will take a brief statement of the new re-elected chairman of the EPP group, Manfred Weber, and then we will answer some questions. Please use the microphone, which will pass around. Chairman. Yes, welcome. Uh, thank you for your interest. Today, the European People's Party group in the European Parliament, the new elected group, had uh, the first meeting, the constitutive meeting, where we elected our presidency. Uh, you can imagine I'm very honored, I'm very happy that I got a strong result for the elections of the chairman of the EPP group. That gives me a lot of support for the uh, uh, talks also with the other groups and also with the council level on our main aim to arrive finally with a good package uh, on, uh, for the future of the European Union content-wise and also from the Post's point of view. Um, I'm really grateful. I did campaign in the last uh, month with the whole team, with all the lead candidates from the EPP family on national level, and to see them now back, elected or re-elected as new members of the European Parliament, that is a great team. And we also voted for the 10 vice presidents of the European People's Party. We have a geographical balance, we have a gender balance, we have also young people included in the new team. So I think it will also strengthen the approach of the European People's Party for the upcoming uh, uh, weeks and months, especially for the negotiations. And then afterwards for the daily work inside of our institution, the European Parliament. Uh, for us, the most important thing is that we want to deliver. We want to deliver to the promises we gave to the people. We know that uh, this new mandate has as a headline a Europe which has to listen to people. We have to take the concerns of people into account in our daily work. And we have to look for change. Uh, Europe needs change. Uh, we are proud about what we achieved in the last uh, decades on European level, about the Europe of today. But we know if we want to keep Europe strong, if we want to keep, uh, bring Europe closer to the people, then we have to change things. And that's why the EPP is ready for, for cooperation on this change agenda for the next five years. The key priorities for us are clear, are based on our manifesto, on our key promises during the election campaign. It is about strengthening the social market economy, more jobs, equal living conditions in today's European Union. We want to work for a social market economy which uh, guarantees fairness in our societies, a big question on the table, and we have to do it in an environmental friendly approach for the future. The second priority is migration. Uh, in our campaign, we experienced that a lot of people in Europe are still concerned about the external borders. So the EPP wants to guarantee that we know who is arriving in Europe to uh, fight against illegal migration, to stop illegal migration, and on the other hand, to show the readiness to help uh, uh, people who really need our help, especially uh, with a friendship approach towards Africa. And the third element is security and still fight against terrorism. Um, having the events of the last uh, months and years in mind, people all over Europe are still concerned about the terroristic threats, and that's why the European People's Party will prioritize this issue as well. That is what, what is in the center of our thoughts. Uh, again, after the elections, we want to deliver on our key promises for the future, and today's main message is uh, also with the elections, also with the support for me as new elected group president, the European People's Party is for the ongoing talks and for the discussions with the other political families. The EPP party is a united party. We are united and we want to deliver. We will now take your questions. Please use the microphone, We're starting with the Polish Presidency. Christopher Czemka, Polish Presidency. The question about the, your talks and uh, in general talks between the EPP and the uh, other groups to secure the majority. Is there any progress? Or, uh, um, is your candidacy uh, to, be, uh, to become uh, chief of the European Commission still on the table or it's, it's occluded by the, uh, by the others uh, group? What are the conditions? And uh, uh, second question, uh, is there any agreement among the EPP if you were erected as a chief of the European Commission who would replace you? Thank you. Well, on the first question about the talks, um, uh, I want to underline again the full readiness of the European People's Party to, to compromise now. I think people understand that during an election campaign you show alternatives, you compete, you, you present your program also as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an alternative to another party. But after the elections, people understand that Democrats have to sit together and have to find common understanding and solutions for the future. And having today's composition of the European Parliament in mind, if we exclude those who don't believe in Europe, 
those who are not credible, reliable on the future perspective for the European Union. If we exclude them, and I want to do so, I'm clear, I was always clear on this, and I hope the others will also do so. If we do so, then there will be only a chance to work together among the clear pro-European parties. So the EPP is ready for this cooperation. We supported all the initiatives to sit together, and uh, hopefully we will achieve in the next uh, upcoming hours already a kind of a format how to do it, so about the technical uh, arrangements for these talks. And the people expect from us that we are starting now to define the key projects for the next five years. Again, our priorities are clear, but we understand that other parties have other priorities and now we are ready to compromise. And on your second question, you can imagine when I'm uh, fresh elected, uh, uh, then I'm not considering any discussion about the long-term questions for the EPP family. Today's main message is that the whole EPP family is united. We have a clear idea about our programmatic approach. I feel today a strong support for me as a candidate for the Commission President. That was clear that the People's Party, the European People's Party group, is strongly behind me. And, uh, and that, is, uh, that is the main message of today. Question. Uh, Georgian TV, uh, first of all, congratulations. Uh, we want to know, um, uh, will be among your priorities uh, to deep uh, cooperation with Eastern partners, uh, associated uh, members uh, of uh, EU, uh, Georgia, Ukraine, and Moldova, and uh, uh, what is the main message of new EPP family for uh, Georgian people and Georgian government? Thank you. The European Union is a union of values, of principles, of ideas. And those who are Europeans and those who believe in the same values uh, must have a chance to work closely together with the European Union and finally also to join the European Union. So for us, we want to have a constructive and a forward-looking, a future-orientated approach. And that's why the partners in our neighborhood, let me say it in this way, uh, sh should really see the European People's Party, the party who is sticking to the principal process of, uh, of, of togetherness, of of uh, unifying uh, uh, the countries who believe in the same spirit like we have it inside of the European Union. Next question. Thank you, Esther Zalan from EU Observer. Uh, let me ask you two questions. One quickly on the timeline for the coalition. When do you think it's realistic that there will be an agreement with the other parties here in the parliament? And the second question about your possibly your favorite member party, Fidesz. Uh, what is the relationship with, uh, with, uh, of Fidesz uh, with the EPP group now? And will the EPP group push for Fidesz MEPs to be part of committees and possibly presidents of committees, chairmen of committees? Thank you. So on the Fidesz question, uh, you know, I myself, uh, together with our party president, Joseph Dahl, pro proposed in the political assembly, I think, four months ago, the idea of the suspension of Fidesz inside of the EPP family. That includes that Fidesz have no right to participate in any kind of, let me say, party internal structure. Uh, Viktor Orban, for example, is not any more present when we meet on the council level as EPP leaders. So that was a clear decision, so a limited uh, uh, influence. And on the other hand, uh, no right to present candidates for the posts inside of the party. That was my proposal. I proposed the suspension of the uh, Fidesz party inside of the European People's Party uh, to show, a, to give a clear indication, a clear signal that uh, we need some changes in the f uh, political approach of Fidesz on the national level. Uh, and today I can tell you that uh, we, uh, we applied, we agreed also in the group on these principles. So no Fidesz member was elected today as vice president of the European People's Party. Um, even having in mind that the delegation could have the right to ask for this, but I said it's uh, not possible. I, uh, again, uh, 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 said that the rules have to be respected, and, and that's, that's the most important message for me, that we are respecting the rules and we are very clear. And let me also add that for uh, our, f our, uh, our member party in, uh, in Hungary, I heard yesterday, the days before yesterday, uh, some statements. I want to clarify one thing. The question of the membership of Fidesz is a question which is now in the hand of Hermann van Rompuy and the vice uh, main board. Uh, it's not in the hand of the Hungarian authorities. It's in the hands of Hermann van Rompuy. He will give us the assessment whether Fidesz can stay or not. And that's why I hope that the changes and the developments uh, will go in the right direction. And on the timeline, um, you know, we are in, 
in talks with the other political families. Uh, if you ask me, I would say, let's start now. Let's immediately start now. I think people outside of, uh, of uh, the European Parliament, outside of the Brussels institutions, expect from us as politicians, as re-elected, with a fresh mandate, re-elected members of the European Parliament, to immediately start the talks about content. Again, the EPP is simply, I cannot say more, is simply ready to immediately start with a very uh, compromise oriented uh, uh, style. Uh, we want to have compromises and we are ready for compromises. We see that, that for example, the Green Party uh, uh, celebrated uh, a success in the elections, they won in some of the member states, and that's why the environmental issues, climate change issues, must be included. And the European People's Party is ready to talk now with the Greens about these issues. And I hope ALDE and Socialists will also be ready now uh, to talk uh, with us, uh, with, uh, towards us, about the content. People are asking us to do so. Cécile. Cécile Ducourtieu, French Daily Le Monde. Uh, going back to uh, Fidesz, when will uh, Van Rompuy uh, give you its assessment on uh, Fidesz membership to, to the EP? And a uh, second question, on, um, maybe y you can uh, give us some clarity on uh, your, uh, your, mem uh, your counterparts in, uh, in the Social Democrats camp and uh, the Liberal camp, please. Thanks. Well, again, on, on Fides, uh, so there is uh, the procedure on, on the wise man structure is in the hand of Hermann van Rompuy. I have full trust in Hermann van Rompuy. He's a clear, uh, pro-European, strong, pro-European personality uh, placed or, or positioned on the values of the EPP uh, and the European Union. So that's why I have full trust in him. And he will, uh, he will present then his report. Uh, and uh, and uh, you know that uh, when we speak about Fidesz, uh, you know that uh, Viktor Orban was quite clear towards me uh, and towards my candidature. That's why I think all the further questions are answered for the moment. So. I'm strict, I'm clear, I want to, imply, I want to uh, make clear that the principles of the European Union are for the EPP family uh, not, uh, not possible to negotiate about them. They are binding for all of us and everybody has to respect them. And that is, uh, that is the starting point for my, for my uh, uh, candidacy now for the European Commission. You know, I also presented already during the election campaign a very concrete plan for a rule of law mechanism, for a binding rule of law mechanism in the European Union having the outcome of the elections in mind. Look to Romania, for example. Look to a lot of countries in Europe. People tell us, we see high turnout, people tell us, please take the fight against corruption. Please take the fight for free, for, for free media. And please take the fight uh, for, for independent judiciary. Please take it serious. People all over Europe expect this from us. And I want to be the front runner in this fight with a binding rule of law mechanism for the future of the European Union. And for the other two parties, um, may I ask you to ask the other parties about their positioning? So I only can tell you what we want to do as EPP. We are united. We have a good plan. We are ready for negotiations. We are ready for compromise. And that is our offer now. We have time for one more. Ladies first. Raphael Scheidreiter, Österreichischer Rundfunk. Darf ich eine Frage auf Deutsch Let's stellen? Let's do it in English. In English, okay. Uh, Mr. Weber, how would you judge your support of um, the heads of state for the moment, uh, taking into account that one of your uh, most, uh, your heaviest supporters, uh, namely Sebastian Kurz from Austria, um, had to decline? Well, uh, the, this, the debate on council side uh, started now after the informal council. Um, I think the outcome of this European Council uh, is, is a positive one because there was the willingness from everyone to compromise. Uh, my feeling, my assessment is currently that nobody wants to risk that we are ending up in a, in a conflict between Parliament and Council, that everyone respects that the European Parliament made a clear decision last Tuesday, uh, and this decision is that uh, we don't elect any kind of candidate for the Commission President without uh, being before the elections uh, a Spitzenkandidate. So present the program and present it also the personality for becoming commission president. That was a clear decision. And that's why, first of all, we have to clarify the institutional perspective. Huh? And I hope everyone in the European Council will finally respect that the Spitzenkandidaten concept, the lead candidate concept, 
is the concept of the European Parliament. It's not the concept of, uh, of individual persons. It's not the concept of individual parties. It is the concept of this institution. And uh, I hope in the Council side everybody will recognize this. I am happy to tell you that my team, let me say, the EPP colleagues in the uh, Council uh, meetings are crystal clear on this. So we have the support of all the eight heads, head and states in government of the EPP. They supported the concept. They underlined again the outcome of Helsinki. So my nomination a few months ago where we had a democratic competition inside of our party. So we are fine, we are clear, we know what we want and hopefully the others can also sort out their perspective. Again, the principle behind this that we have to make out of the European Union a real democratic European Union, a really parliamentarized European Union. Uh, that is what, I, what we fight for and hopefully we can convince everyone in the European Union and nobody knows exactly about the Austrian voice for the moment. That's up to the uncertainty there, but for the European di dimension, uh, we know what we want to do. Okay, thank you very much. We have time for one more. One more, yes, absolutely. Okay. So, I, I um, Maya Labum from Politico, I want to know how challenging this, this process of negotiating with other groups will be for you compared to 2014. How, you know, how daunting this challenge will be, or can you say, uh, the challenges that are ahead for you and how tough this will be for you? Frankly speaking, the first, uh, the first impression is that on the concept we have not anymore the poor conflict between Parliament and Council like we had it yesterday with Schulz Juncker and on the Council side of a total uh, no to the concept. That was last time the situation. And then finally Parliament won um, because we defend also with a strengthened uh, democratic legitimacy now, with a high turnout, we defend simply the interests of the people who voted for us. So that's why last time it was a huge conflict among institutions. This time I don't see it in this way. I see that uh, on council side we have now the liberal team, Rütte Michel, we have the socialist team, Costa Sanchez, we have the EPP team with Christianis Karins and Andre Blenkovic. And they sit together and they negotiate and they talk to each other among party political families. So I see a development on a more, from a democratic point on a more normal situation that parties meet, sit together and try to find solutions. And you know, for us it's crucial to say that the EPP uh, uh, cannot celebrate a victory. I said this several times, we are lose, we lost seats. But we are number one and that's why we are happy to arrive as number one in the European Parliament with a distance of around 30 seats. That gives us the role of the leading party in the European Parliament. And this gives us also strength for the mandate to lead uh, in the future. So that is the starting point and that's why you, you, you ask about my emotional, let me say, perspective. I, I'm, I'm happy after today with a strong support in the EPP family with a unanimous vote for me as a group chair. I feel strong support. We are united. We know what we want. We are ready for compromise. And I hope everybody arrives in such a mood of readiness for compromise. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.